Hello! Welcome to Greg Tech School. My name is Miguk Namja. Today, we're going to build on what we've shown showed before with Greg Tech item pipes, and we're going to look at fluids. How Greg Tech fluid pipes and how fluids from Greg Tech machines uh, are probably a good way, or not, not a bad way, to set up for your ergonomic setup. Uh, what do I mean by er ergonomic setup? I mean the machines that you use constantly to do crafting, to make parts, um, to do like small batch processing of things. So um, those are usually the machines you have closest to your inventory, which is here. <clears throat> and the, the machines that are closest to me are usually the ones I use the most, the most often, like the bending machine, the extruder, the massive macerator, advanced assembling machine, uh, another macerator there, alloy smelter, and so on and so on. Um, so today we're going to look at how the fluids uh, interact with those. And let's start over here. Uh, before I do that, let us let us get a sound muffler because that that is kind of annoying over there. These machines here. So right now we'll make them a little quieter. And it should be quieter coming now. No? There we go. Alright. So common machines you have fluids that you need to put into. Uh, cutting machine here. Sure, you can do lubricant, but water is a lot, a lot, a lot easier. So I have items coming in the top, water coming in the side, another one. The autoclave, again, water in the side. Uh, the mixer over, over here, and that's another one that has that has water. Um, other machines that require fluids. You have the, the arc furnace. Um, it's good to have oxygen piped into, into that. The assembler, which has molten soldering alloy coming into it. And refined glue coming into your basic assembly machine. And another very, very common one, you have an advanced fluid solidifier for making things like plates. You could also be making things like rotors. It's also great for making um, glass glass blocks. Here, turn turn sand to blocks. So, yeah. So we're, we're going to be looking at how um, how best to automate the fluids coming into Greg Tech machines along with the items. So, let's go downstairs to kind of our lab setup here. Um, and this is set up from before, just a simple power setup, four amps of LB power coming from steam, and items along the bottom. So let's start with automating some pretty common base basic machines. Uh, let's start off with the cutting machine here. Um, now we probably want the cutting machine on the, the end, so I'm going to have that feed down into that item pipe, and shift click, and we get power. And it should be going down into the item pipe there. Yep. And have it output items on the bottom. So now we need to feed in feed in water. You can feed in a uh, water source from the top. I usually like from the top or the bottom. In this case here, um, let's have it feed in from the bottom. And I'm going to use a thirsty tank. Um, but if you don't have those yet, if you haven't done Thumbcraft, then just, just imagine you have one of the Railcraft tanks or a pump or any other water water source, but this will, this will make it easy. So to use a thirsty tank, we need a water block source next to it. In this case, it would be right below it. And we put that on top, and there we go. Now we want to put our, our fluids pipe. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be wooden, but probably wooden because it's cheap. Right, let's connect it to there, and the thirsty tank does not push out, so we got a pump from it. So let's add a pump there, and we want to import into the fluid pipe, which will then go into the machine. Awesome! So now we can start cutting stuff. Let's go over here, grab a hopper, grab a chest. top and we can do things like cut 
stone into stone slabs, and that's going to come out in my chest over here. Awesome. That's a pretty easy way to um, set up a basic cutting machine on the end. All right. Since we have large wooden fluid pipe here on the end, we can add another machine that requires water. Um, before we do that, let us hook it up to the item pipe network. So large item pipe here and here. Let's actually, oh, what did I do here? I did huge. Um, should definitely try to match the item pipes because Greg Tip pipe networks will uh, downgrade to the smallest pipe in terms of throughput. So if I did, did that, the entire network here would then downgrade to the throughput of large tin item pipes and I wouldn't get the benefit of these huge tin item pipes. So um, always keep that in mind. All right, so let's do the next one. Let's do, uh, I thought I grabbed an autoclave before. I guess I didn't. Anyway, let's grab a mixer. That'll be fine too. I have that guy. I'll put items on the bottom. Fluid's coming in here on the side. There we go. Um, and now I can do things like mix uh, wet concrete, which is a pretty common one. So I believe that is um, Believe that is uh, clay dust, stone dust. Calcite. And some kind of glass dust or something like that. It's not exactly glass dust. Let's see, I gotta go back to recipe mode. I forget. Concrete. Smelting and fluid solidifier. No. There we go. Wet concrete. In the mixer, it is calcite, stone dust, clay dust, and quartz sand. That's it, quartz sand. Back to cheat mode. There we go. All right. Feed all these in, and I think it's a circuit of two. Upstairs. Let's turn this into a two circuit. Go back down here, and we're going to show mixing up wet concrete. There we go. Um, oh, shoot, I meant to show an item. But I showed a fluid. That's fine. Because um, then we can show this going in a fluid solidifier, actually. And let's put that over here. Add an item pipe down below. Put our fluid solidifier right on top. Go. In this case, I'm not outputting items on the bottom, so I want to break that. Otherwise, uh, if I don't break break that uh, connection there, then the items are going to come in through the bottom, and we might get some strange mixing recipes with strange inputs coming into there. So we don't want to do that. All right, uh, let's take a fluid pipe because we're going to come out the side. Come in there. And have him fluid output on the side. He's coming into there, and now, now we can get our uh, block mold. And block mold. There you are. And 
There we go. And have him outpump at the bottom. And there we go. And that is how you can automate light concrete. Um, I'm not going to show the piping in the all, all this stuff here, but just imagine I have this on top, and that's how you can make light con concrete um, in a pretty small setup there. Another simple setup here, let's do the arc furnace. Again, I could do this on the, the end here. Let's grab some more um, large tin item pipes. Oh, sorry, we did huge. I want to show this here. Boom, boom, boom. And let's do an arc furnace here. There we go. Have him output on the bottom. And now we need oxygen coming in. So we could do something like this. Let's just imagine we have oxygen way up here. And I thought I got a... Oh, there we go. Yeah, I got a little voltage tank. All right, um, let's imagine we have some kind of oxygen source. It could be this tank. It could be some other tank way far off. But this will hold our oxygen for now. We're going to export. And we break it. Even though we broke it, it still remembers that it's export. There we go. Yep. Still remembers that it's export. Make sure, let's use the built-in shutters, make sure it always flows the correct way. And let's take our oxygen, throw that in. And now we've got oxygen filling up here. And then we can do things like uh, turn copper ingots into annealed copper ingots. Make sure we grab the correct tech version. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And now we got anneal copper ingots. Um, I also do iron ingots. Yep. To wrought iron. Same kind of thing. And of course, we can automate all of that here. Let's say we're done with the iron ingots, and then we start making anneal copper ingots. Cool. Loud. It'll quiet down after a little bit. Cool. All right. Uh, another very, very common setup here. Um, we have early game. We have glue, and we put glue in the assembling machine um, to make recipes like. Uh, like circuit boards, like the phenolinic circuit boards. Phenolinic circuit boards um, use refined glue, sawdust, and a program circuit one to make those in an assembler. But where are you where are you getting the glue from? Um, one good way to get the glue is from uh, slime. You can you can get these from from slime trees. Um, you could also do it from sticky resin. But notice all these are in the multi-block centrifuge, or actually regular centrifuge as well. Yep, and the regular centrifuge will make the same thing. So um, I think really really good solution for these is to put a centrifuge right beside it. Um, before we do that, though, we want to do one more thing here. We want to have the centrifuge configured with the pump to auto export out the side of the pump because the centrifuge will also output items. And let's grab some more huge 10 item pipes. Uh, let's just grab a whole stack. go and we're going to pipe these over here to meet up with that there we 
go. And we want to output stuff on the bottom. Item auto output, item auto output. And remember the pump that was on the side? The pump is what's going to pull the glue into the, uh, the item assembly machine there. So let's say, for instance, we have some slime. There we go. And we have some sawdust. And we got a circuit of one. I wish any guy let me cheat in a circuit of one, but it's not. So I'll just do that. And that. And I run back upstairs. Grab my circuit of one. I probably should have brought this downstairs before doing this video, but it's okay. Come over here. I need a little time for the glue to form in there. Anyway, so there we go. We did that. So we got our refined glue always being pumped into there. So this basic assembly machine is basically dedicated to refined glue, but that's okay. There are a lot of recipes that use refined glue. Um, and then out the bottom of the centrifuge, we have items coming out. So we get, it's, that's where the rubber's coming, coming from there. Um, so that is another way to set up your, your machines. You can, you can put the pump directly on, on the machine. Um, you don't have to have a pipe in between. And then that way you can you can have items going one way, and you can have fluids going going the other way into an adjacent uh, machine. Cool. So that's that's what it looks like for that's kind of the most common uses of your ergonomic machine setup. Um, let's go look at how I have it set up actually in my base, and it's it's in a very similar fashion here got water into the cutting machine into the autoclave again water going into the mixer oxygen there see the oxygen coming in here to the arc furnace and then I have my glue coming from the centrifuge going in there another one is soldering alloy coming from fluid extractor and then another common one is your basic advanced fluid extractor going into your fluid solidifier for making things like glass and uh, rotors and other stuff. All right, there's that setup. All right, now let's switch gears to purpose-built setups where we got item pipes and we got uh, Greg-type fluid pipes coming in. So here is my sulfuric acid setup. That uh, all that feeds over to here to sulfuric acid. Um, sulfuric acid is nothing more or less sulfur, oxygen, and water. So what I have here. I have oxygen coming in here. Um, there's currently no, no oxygen in there because I do have an oxygen production problem I haven't solved yet. So, um, yeah. But when I did have oxygen, when I do have oxygen, it flows into here. And it chemically reacts here. That automatically outputs down here to make the next step. And that automatically down here and mixes with water to make the next step. And what I have here, um, so that's that's not that tr tricky, but a really cool technique I have, have going on here in between this chemical reactor and this low low voltage fluid fluid tank here. Um, if you look at uh, let's look at the chain for a sulfuric acid here. Unless we want to look at recipe mode. So if you look at sulfuric acid coming out of a chemical reactor, so this very bottom one here is taking sulfur trioxide in, along with a water cell, and it outputs a, um, actually I'm using that one there. Um, I'm using this version. Sulfur trioxide in the top, water cell in, sulfuric acid out, and an empty cell out. So that's what I'm using in this bottom chemical reactor. Again, water cell in, empty water cell out, one, right? So when the water cell comes out, uh, it's being pulled into this uh, low voltage fluid tank here. And I'll show you that setup. So if we look at this low voltage fluid tank, we have an item con conveyor here, an item conveyor here. So what's going to happen when you get sulfur trioxide coming in, it's going to combine with the water cell to make a uh, sulfuric acid 
out, which is outputting on the bottom. And then it's going to make an empty cell, which is going to be exported out this side. And I'm allowing input. So I'm exporting the empty cell and I'm allowing input. Why? Because I want to allow the water cell in. Well, over here on this fluid tank, likewise, I'm exporting filled water cells, or that cells with water, and I'm allowing empty water cells. So each one is pushing into the other, and it's allowing it to be input. So let us demonstrate here. So let's say, for instance, uh, I want to empty these out. Let's say I just pop that down. All I'm going to do is empty out these water cells here and demonstrate. All right, now I got empty water cells. I'm going to come over here. So these guys fill. After 20 seconds, they should get pulled in over here. There we go. Um, and then if I had oxygen, which I don't currently at the moment, then you would see this being made. You'd see the uh, water cell and sulfur trioxide being turned into sulfur acid, the NP cell coming out and being pulled over here. So there's that. Um, exact same setup is occurring over here with the oxygen. Um, exactly the same, same thing. Um, I am step before that. Sulfur trioxide is sulfur dioxide. So this is the recipe I'm using here. Um, sulfur dioxide is coming in the top and sulfur trioxide is coming out the bottom and then it's also producing an, an empty cell. Well that empty cell needs to get turned back, in, back, back into oxygen which is occurring over over here. Exactly the same, same thing. It's just filling it with oxygen again and putting it back back in. Um, and then the sulfur uh, dioxide is being produced here. And if I look at how you use these in a chemical reactor. Chemical reactor, there we go, sulfur dioxide. So oxygen and sulfur dust, like sulfur dioxide. So that's sulfur, um, sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide to sulfuric acid all in a relatively compact setup and all I'm doing is inputting oxygen here and water here and that's that and this guy comes out here um, sulfuric acid and he comes in over here that is an example of a purpose-built setup um, relatively simple one um, more complex setup that's what I have going over here a lot of pipes going in all different directions all different kinds of uh, pipe spaghetti going on. Uh, I'm not going to get into to all of that. I just wanted to show a fairly simple setup over here. Purpose-built setup. Um, and those are used for all kinds of uh, things. Like I have another setup here. We're going from ethylene uh, to molten polyethylene. And then also ethylene uh, getting turned into uh, multi-polyvinyl chloride. Um, kind of another one over here. I got my circuit set up here. I got chlorine. Whoop. Okay, I need more. I need more chlorine. Uh, and iron getting turned to uh, iron three chloride, and that is used to make uh, good circuit boards and plastic cir circuit boards. But again, um, that's all using kind of the same techniques I showed down 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 there. Um, I got some item pipe automation, and I got some fluid pipe automation going on. And that is it. Pretty much set up for ergonomic and purpose-built Greg Tech item pipe and fluid pipe automation. And thanks for watching.